Oh, I always knew you were a dark horse, Mr. Yeah, Yang. Well, speak for yourself. I, you know, uh, Albert, uh, I, 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 if I had met you a few years ago, my creative career would have taken a, a more interesting turn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I heard you had something new in the works. What's it about? Let me guess. The Adventures of the Nameless. Well, it's early concept at the moment. Uh, the Express crew has given me a lot of food for thought. But still, when it comes to key plot points, uh, I'm in need of some inspiration. Ooh, inspiration? Uh, how about, uh... Hmm. How about this? We give you some ideas. After all, when it comes to scripts, we're seasoned professionals. Uh, security! Security! The rules of this game are like reality. We all think we have infinite possibilities, but when you really analyze it, every question and answer is constrained by previous choices. Relax. your full potential. The power you carry is the key to opening a way through to the Ambrosial Arbor. Has come in here and triggered your memory. What happens next is in your hands. You, you, and you. All three of you are staying right here. The karma of past lives changed the world with the present. Not your world has a day-night cycle. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm your buddy Albert, and welcome to the version 1.2, Even Immortality Ends, special program. Today, we have three special guests in the hot seats. <laughs> Introducing... Hey guys, I'm Cheryl Texera, and I voice Kafka. Hey there, I'm Damon Mills, and I voice Blade. Hi folks, my name is Corey Landis, and I voice Welt. Guys, it's great to have you with us. <laughs> Man, that trailer was a roller coaster. <laughs> Corey, your thoughts? Uh, well, <laughs> well, me already, okay. Uh, um, well, uh, it, it looked like various factions were getting ready for battle. Uh, I, I think uh, we're, we're one move away from a serious showdown here. <laughs> Agreed. It was cool to see some new environments and enemies, too. 
I better get my team in order. <laughs> You're gonna need to, my friend. <laughs> in version 1.2, the Xianzhou Lao Fu will face a setback that threatens the fate of the whole alliance. The Trailblazer will need to pass through various delves and arrive at the location of the sealed Ambrosial Arbor, where a decisive battle with the one responsible for the Stellaron disaster awaits. Not to mention, Don Hung finally gets reunited with the Astral Express crew. Don Hung's journey has been longer than most could imagine. Hmm, care to elaborate, Damon? Uh, I didn't say anything. Ah, come on, guys. You're trying to get me fired here. <laughs> d d editors, you can cut that bit out. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Oh, right. <laughs> the story left off on a bit of a cliffhanger last time. It sure did. I mean, why did Jing Yuan deploy those forces? Who is he trying to catch? And what about the Stellaron hunters? Where did they go after escaping? Well, who says they went anyway? <laughs> Cut that out, too. <laughs> I'm sure all these questions will be answered in the upcoming story. <laughs> now, Aside from Trailblaze mission updates, version 1.2 will see new characters coming to the warp. <laughs> First on the scene, Blade. I have a question for Damon. Um, if, say, there were five people, would I be one of them? I don't know. <sighs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> uh, don't look at me. I don't know anything about anything. <laughs> okay? <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure I'm not one of the five people, but here is a fact for you. Whenever Blade gets scary, it's the Mara flaring up. Uh, isn't he... Always scary? Mm, uh, he usually does what I tell him. <laughs> I should probably unpack that a little. Blade relies on Kafka's spirit whisper to suppress the Mara inside him. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. You know, most of the time, Blade's a nice, quiet boy. Totally. <laughs> He's not a strong communicator, that's for sure. I'm pretty sure half my recording sessions have focused on two sounds. Number one. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that. <laughs> huh. It's strange that a lone wolf like him would want to team up with the Stellaron hunters. Unless Kafka's spirit whispered him into it? Mm, Kafka was more of a go-between. The real reason Blade joined was because Elio promised him the outcome he desired. Uh, outcome? Meaning, uh, vengeance? A certain... Someone on the Express has been having nightmares about this guy. <laughs> Not just vengeance, a funeral. <laughs> a funeral? Mm -hmm. His own, to be precise. <laughs> Through unexpected circumstances, Blade became immortal. His body recovers from the worst of sicknesses and the gravest of injuries, even from death itself. Those bandages aren't for show. For Blade, immortality isn't a blessing. It's a curse that follows him wherever he goes. <sighs> Yikes! <laughs> and I thought I had a problem, huh? Well, uh, let's leave something to the imagination here. <laughs> I'm sure our trailblazers will find out more about Blade's backstory as things unfold. <laughs> For now, let's take a look at what he's capable of on the battlefield. Blade is a wind-type character following the path of destruction. By consuming his own HP, he's able to deal greater damage to enemies. <laughs> and I guess that's the risk you take when you're a mortal. <laughs> <laughs> Blade's skill consumes a set amount of his own HP and initiates Hellscape. While Hellscape is active, Blade deals greater damage and his basic attack is enhanced from Shard Sword to Forest of Swords. While Shard Sword is a single target attack, Forest of Swords deals damage to multiple enemies. I got a question. Can Blade still use his skill if his HP isn't enough to cover the uh, set amount? Ah, in that situation, when Blade uses his skill, his HP decreases to one. Ooh, that sounds a little dicey. 
A bit. Well, there's a silver lining. When Blade's HP decreases, his talent is triggered, granting him a charge. When charges are fully stacked, Blade unleashes a follow-up attack on all enemies and recovers a set amount of HP. When Blade unleashes his ultimate, his HP is set to 50% of his max HP, and he deals massive damage to a single target and adjacent enemies. HP for damage, huh? Interesting. No wonder he's uh, so indifferent to being healed. Huh? <laughs> and the more HP Blade loses, the more damage his ultimate deals. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Blade's technique, Karma Wind, also consumes his HP and deals wind damage to all enemies after entering battle. Ooh, when it comes to taking damage, Blade should be more afraid of himself than his enemies. Mm, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> New ultimate line, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> we can't let Blade steal the show. <laughs> it's time to talk about another Stellaron hunter. <laughs> His partner in crime, Kafka. Kafka's a familiar face at this point in the story. She was the first person the Trailblazer set eyes on, and meaning Kafka must have been there for the Trailblazer's first words, the first step. <laughs> no wonder so many players are calling her. Um, uh, um, <laughs> um, okay, okay. I, I, I don't think that's going to get past the editors there, Albert. Um, look, what, what, what I am interested in is this. Since Kafka appeared on Herta Space Station, she's managed to implant the Trailblazer with the Stellaron, hijack the Express's signals, and draw the crew onto the Cien Jo La Fu. It almost feels like she has the Trailblazer's destiny in the palm of her hand. It's like Kafka said, when it comes to scripts, the Stellaron hunters are seasoned professionals. Well, that might be the case, but that's not to say the Trailblazer's choices aren't important. What's a script without a direct? Mm, reach the end of the story in your own way. Mm. <laughs> I've got another question. Why did Kafka join the Stellaron Hunters? Oh, so Kafka was born on Teres V, a planet that knows no fear. And literally, Kafka is unable to feel the emotion of fear and therefore cannot comprehend the value of life. When Elio promised to bring about a change for her, she signed up without a second thought. Now, for someone who can't feel fear, she's pretty great at making others feel it. <laughs> this scares you more than it scares me. <laughs> You want me to use my spirit whisper on him, Albert? <laughs> yes. No, no, no. I, I mean, uh, let's move on to Kafka's combat, shall we? Oh, yes. I thought you'd never ask. So Kafka is a lightning-type character following the path of nihility, and she can deal additional damage over time to enemies. Her skill deals lightning damage to multiple targets. If an enemy is afflicted with D.O.T., they receive an additional bout of D.O.T. damage. That is to say, if an enemy is already afflicted with D.O.T., they receive additional damage both during their turn and after Kafka's attack. That's right. Not to mention, additional damage doesn't replace existing D.O.T. I mean, did you think Kafka was going to take it easy on him? Come on. <laughs> and separately... After an ally uses a basic attack, Kafka will launch a follow-up attack. Kafka's ultimate, on the other hand, deals lightning damage to all enemies with a chance of shocking targets Ooh. and immediately dealing additional damage to those already shocked. Kafka's technique can attack all enemies within a set range and deals lightning damage to all enemies after entering battle. How elegant. Well, <laughs> she likes elegant things, and there's a certain elegance to combat. <laughs> Kafka's abilities are kind of terrifying. Her enemies are like flies trapped in a way of slowly taking damage until... Boom. Boom. <laughs> hey, that was pretty good. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. 
from HP sacrificing maniacs and emotionless sociopaths to the coolest kid on the block. <laughs> it's time to introduce our next character. What? Hey, that is a little harsh. Yeah. Also, since when did Welt become the coolest kid on the block? Now, <laughs> think again. I'm talking about the born and bred Bella Bog hero, Luca. Oh, come on. So that's the guy on the light cone. Mm hmm he looks a little different on the light cone. Luca is an underworld fighter that goes by the moniker Luca Strongarm. <laughs> He's a member of Wildfire and apprentice to Oleg. Wait, doesn't the underworld have a fight club? I guess that must be where Luca spends his time. <laughs> oh, you better believe it. In fact, He's the Fight Club champion, and not only that, he's also a reliable operations consultant for the moles. So he's with the moles, huh? Does Luca know he's a member? Uh, probably. <laughs> the kids of the underworld look up to Luca in a big way. And the reason he fights is to set a good example of dedication and discipline. <laughs> and speaking of fighting, let's take a look at him in action. Luca is a physical type character following the path of nihility. After multiple attacks, he's able to launch an enhanced basic attack. His skill deals physical damage to a single target and has a chance of inflicting bleed. And during battle, Luca can obtain fighting will through a variety of attacks. When fighting will reaches a certain number of stacks, Luca's basic attack is enhanced. His enhanced basic attack deals four hits of damage, with the final hit dealing additional damage to enemies currently inflicted with bleed. Kids today, no <laughs> respect. <laughs> when Luca unleashes his ultimate, in addition to dealing damage, he also obtains fighting will, and there's a chance of increasing the target's damage received for a set number of turns. <laughs> and when your opponent's fist is the same size as your head, <laughs> it's time to throw in the towel. <laughs> yeah, it's the power of those punches that scares me. I mean, I'm, I'm sure having a uh, robotic arm uh, is also a big help, but I think Luca's strength lies in his love of the sport. Oh, oh, and I almost forgot. When using his technique during exploration, Luca obtains fighting will after entering battle. Jeez, does this guy ever take a break? Well, it was great to start off the program with a character deep dive. Next up, it looks like we've got two brand new five-star light cones coming to the warp in version 1.2. <laughs> Let's start with a path of destruction light cone, the unreachable side. Oh, okay. Uh, question, question. Uh, the Paradise Blade mentions in his ultimate line, <laughs> is that where he's standing right there? <laughs> I don't know what paradise means to you, Corey, but a barren sword-filled wasteland isn't my idea of a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. Here's a fun fact. Each of those swords had an owner, and Blade was the last one to see them alive. Oh, whoa. So he killed them for their swords. Only a brutal, calculated, jealous mind could do something Stop! like that. Stop! <laughs> The maniac and sociopath segment is over. <laughs> Moving swiftly onto a five-star path of nihility light cone. Patience is all you need. Here, we see a... Uh, a resident sociopath again. <laughs> hmm, okay. Well, looks like uh, Kafka's uh, waiting for the main course to arrive there, huh? <laughs> what do you think's on the menu? You want to uh, guess? <laughs> What are you looking at me for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on. Nobody eats out, right? <clears throat> During the uh, first phase of version 1.2 in the character warp, a lost soul, trailblazers can obtain the limited five-star character blade. During the same phase in the Lycona Bat warp, 
the drop rate of the five-star light cone, the unreachable side, will be boosted. And during the second phase of version 1.2 in the character warp, Nessun Dorma, Trailblazers can obtain the limited five-star character Kafka and four-star character Luca. <laughs> and during the same phase in the light cone event warp, the drop rate of the five-star light cone, patience is all you need, will be boosted. <laughs> and that's a wrap on banners. <laughs> I need to lie down. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, Trailblazers. Welcome back, everyone! As mentioned at the start of the show in version 1.2, before the Trailblazers' decisive boss battle, they will need to pass through various delves. <laughs> no surprise then, that 1.2 would unlock two new areas, the Alchemy Commission and Scale Gorge Waterscape. Now, the Alchemy Commission, is that where the Sienjo makes its medicines, or...? Ooh, you got it! The Alchemy Commission is one of the six commissions of the Lafu. <laughs> and, for no prize whatsoever, can anyone name all six? Oh yeah, let's oh. see, the Alchemy Commission, the Divination Commission... Uh, the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, the Cloud Knights... Oh, shoot, what was that other one? Ah, <laughs> drum roll, please! <laughs> the Realm Keeping Commission! <laughs> oh, that's right, that's right. The Alchemy Commission used to focus their efforts on the wave immortality. <laughs> but these days, it's all about medical research and treating diseases. Now, the Trailblazer came face to face with some Alchemy Commission folks in Exalting Sanctum, but things seemed a little off. Uh, I don't want to create more work for the editors, but I have a theory that the reason Adjacent why that. Adjacent to the Alchemy Commission lies Scale Gorge Waterscape, <laughs> the realm of the video. <sighs> He's just ignoring <laughs> us now. We've got a lot to get through. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, <laughs> along with the Alchemy Commission and Scale Gorge Waterscape. Come new puzzles! <clears throat> Seems like trailblazers will face a lot of new challenges on the road to the Ambrosial Arbor. I can't wait. Oh, Albert, are you making Cory read off the teleprompter? Puzzles aren't the only new challenges trailblazers will be facing in these areas. There are monsters afoot. <laughs> First up, a creature of indomitable size and destructive power, the Malefic Ape. <laughs> and next on the list, an entity rid of the burden of humanity that has remodeled itself in the way of immortality, the Ascended. And finally... Yen Ching? Why would the General's aides attack a Cloud Knight lieutenant? All will be revealed in the version 1.2 story. Uh, I, I think we skipped an enemy, Albert. Uh, you, you mentioned a boss lurking on the Sienjo Law Fu. Uh, Care for a sneak peek? Oh, how could I forget? <laughs> folks, it's Fantilia the Undying, wielder of the power of both the destruction and the abundance. In her first phase, she summons abundance lotuses which restore her HP 
and reduce the player team's skill points. Weakening her enemies and strengthening herself in one fell swoop? Yikes. Mm, that's why choosing the right moment to destroy those Abundance Lotuses is so important. Eliminating an Abundance Lotus recovers three skill points. Well, you know, when you borrow something, you gotta give it back. <laughs> now, in her second phase, Fantilia uses her Destruction Power to summon Destruction Lotuses. These Lotuses reduce ally max HP and, when in bloom, deal damage to a single target. So, should we just wait for them to stop blooming before we take them out? No, I doubt the power of the destruction is as simple as that. <laughs> oh, you're not wrong, Cheryl. When the Lotuses aren't in bloom, their toughness doesn't receive damage. As such, Trailblazers should seize the moment when the flowers are open to break their weakness. And finally, in the third phase, Fantilia goes golden. Hmm, what terrible trick does she have up her sleeve? <laughs> I'm afraid Trailblazers are going to have to wait to find out. I I'm curious, where did Fantilia even come from? Uh, how come she can use the powers of the Abundance and the Destruction? I hate to be that guy again. But all will be revealed in the version 1.2 story. Anyone here getting deja vu? Hey, I can't go spilling all the beans. When the main story combat draws to a close, Fantilia the Undying will join the Echo of War and drop the advanced trace materials required for Blade, Kafka, and Luca. Regret of Infinite Okuma. And a quick reminder, Trailblazers, Echo of War has a limited number of weekly rewards, so don't forget to plan ahead. Also, in version 1.2, Stagnant Shadow, Shape of Celestial, is arriving, which drops the brand new character ascension material, Ascendant Debris. This is also the ascension material required for Blade. Well, if I'm not mistaken, it's time to talk about version 1.2 events. Ooh, I've been waiting for this segment. <laughs> Let's start with Tales of the Fantastic. The crisis on the Sienjo La Fu has subsided and the feats of the nameless can be heard on every street corner. <laughs> Starskiff Haven storyteller, Mr. Sien, is interested in the Astral Express's tale, eager to work his storytelling magic. Oh yeah, the storyteller, I'm, I'm familiar with him. I wonder what he'll do with the Trailblazer's story. His artistic license and mm -hmm. collage editing bring all kinds of tales to life. <laughs> well, that's Mr. Sien, all right. To spruce up the tale, He's given us a set of protagonist models. Protagonist models? Mm -hmm. What's that? I hear it's kind of a magical object invented by one of the script writers at the Immersion Club. It industrializes the script writing process. As long as you follow its guidance, you'll be able to captivate an audience with your storytelling. To unleash the full potential of the protagonist models, the trailblazer must accompany Mr. Sien into the past and visit historical battle locations. <laughs> Now, the name might be a little dull, but don't underestimate the protagonist models. Different combinations have different effects. Once the protagonist models have been properly refined, Legend of the Trailblazer can be a runaway <laughs> hit. <laughs> oh, this sounds like a fun event. Well, there's more where that came from. <laughs> the next event is called Underground Treasure Hunt. The underworld appraiser, Bellaway the Miner's Lamp, is making a comeback. They say that in Bellabog's Great Mine, ancient ruins have been discovered where many rare treasures and relics are waiting to be identified. However, according to the senior treasure hunter Axe, there exists a space beneath the ruins where relics of even greater value may be found. The only thing is, the road to the ruin depths is filled with all kinds of danger. Treasure hunters must steal themselves and explore sealed areas in order to progress deeper into the ruins. I'm sure these sealed areas are full of hidden treasures, but uh, there's always a catch. Surprise and danger rolled into one. I'm sure Kafka would get a kick out of this. Treasure hunters will need endurance, courage, and insight if they want to succeed. It's almost certain that the sealed areas will contain enemies. But supplementary items and key cards to other sealed areas are the secrets to progression. This is a solo mission, right? It sounds like a tough challenge to take on alone. <laughs> oh, they won't be alone. During exploration, treasure hunters can be sure to run into familiar faces. Uh, let's hope that we're happy to see them. 
<laughs> so do treasure hunters get any kind of special rewards? Ah, <laughs> of course! In the underground treasure hunt event, aside from the usual stellar jade, treasure hunters can obtain the themed Where's the Rabbit chat box. Ah, uh, isn't the rabbit in the chat box? It's a treasure chest. What I'm trying to say is, the theme of the chat box is called Where's the Rabbit? Ah, uh-huh, okay. Uh, so the, the rabbit's in the treasure chest, right? <sighs> in version 1.2, the message and chat box functions will be enabled for the first time. Trailblazers can obtain and swap between chat boxes. And I'm not just talking about the friend chat screen. I'm talking about the game's character interaction chat boxes, too. Oh, I love the rabbit design. It seems like something Clara would like, too. So cute. Yeah, <laughs> so cute. Do you think uh, Svarog could have designed it for oh. her? Oh. Maybe? <laughs> Interesting thought. <laughs> Safe to say that chat boxes will continue to get updates. Trailblazers will be able to view and swap between those they already have, as well as view those they've yet to obtain. On to the next event. Where are you, Mystery Trotter? This really is the version of missing creatures, isn't it? The good news is, all of them can be found. <laughs> Regan Abelabog has come across a new scientific research gadget. Homemade sensor number 223. The device is able to detect mysterious coordinates that display abnormal readings. Uh, I recognize that abnormal reading. Isn't that just a trotter? Oh no, don't tell me that we have to fight it. I mean, sure, it's a little scary, but it's cute, right? Uh, if I told you it dropped Stellar Jade, would would that uh, change how you feel, oh. maybe? Oh. Yeah, that thing's bacon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. You know what's tastier than bacon? What? Forgotten Hall updates! <laughs> In version 1.2, <laughs> the brand new memories of Sienjo, the voyage of Novices Trigger, will be arriving. Yeah, now we're talking. That's not all. After clearing the Forgotten Hall Memories of Sienjo Stage 1, Trailblazers can obtain the four-star character you call. Oh, <laughs> cool. In addition to the Forgotten Hall, the simulated universe will also be receiving an update in the form of World 7. <laughs> and the brand new planar ornaments, Rutland Arena and Broken Keel, will be added to the World 7 immersion device. Wow. And the ride doesn't stop there either. In version 1.2's Planar Fisher event, trailblazers that successfully challenge the simulated universe can obtain a set amount of double planar ornament rewards. Meanwhile, in the Alchemy Commission's Cavern of Corrosion, trailblazers can obtain the brand new cavern relics. Longibus Disciple and Messenger Traversing Hackerspace. Nice. Mm. And finally, in 1.2's Realm of the Strange event, players that successfully challenge the Cavern of Corrosion can obtain a set amount of double Cavern Relic rewards. Whew. And, uh, I think we're gonna go pass out for a while. <laughs> Over to you guys. <laughs> no problem, we got you, buddy, we got you. In version 1.2, the two companion missions, Letter from a Strange Woman and For I Have Touched the Sky, will be arriving. In Letter from a Strange Woman, the Trailblazer will receive a request from Kafka. As for how the Trailblazer should respond, I only have one thing to say. When you have a chance to make a choice, make one that you know you won't regret. <laughs> All will be revealed in version 1. Bunch of story. Isn't he supposed to be passed out? I think someone's playing sound bites. Um oh, oh, I I I should say a little something about the other companion mission. In For I Have Touched the Sky, an accident has occurred in Stargazer Navalia. When the Trailblazer investigates, they find a girl in trouble. Who could she be? And what secrets could you Kong be hiding? Thanks for watching Keep It Up with Star Rail. Hey, hey, sound guy, a little early on that one. <clears throat> Before we bring things back to a close here, let's talk about the ever popular reward events. <laughs> Version 1.2 will see the return of the Gift of Odyssey check in event. During the event, as long as Trailblazers log in for seven days, doesn't have to be consecutive. They can acquire 10 Star Rail Special Passes. Yes, Ooh. I love a check in event. Yes, let's do it. That's exciting. <laughs> uh, can somebody get Corey some water, please?
Well, I said it last time, and I'll say it again. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Another special program has come to an end. We talked about a lot of 1.2 features. You guys, got any favorites? I've got to be that boss fight for me. Uh, when, when the crew fought the Doomsday Beast and Kokolia, Welt was watching from the sidelines. This will be the first time we see him on the battlefield. Ooh. So watch your back, Fantilia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to see more of Blade. Heck, I recorded enough fighting efforts to lay down an album. <laughs> we better get some fight scenes. Come on. Not to mention, it seems like him and Don Hung are finally about to meet. Something tells me they're not going to settle things over a cup of tea. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, as for me, it is all about Kafka. Although I am curious about the tales of the fantastic event, because this sounds like trailblazers have plenty of room to get creative. Seems like we're all a little biased here. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> totally. but one thing is for sure, 1.2 is a version to look forward to. Albert here has done a good job keeping us in check today, you know, and there's still a lot of mystery out there for you trailblazers to delve into. <sighs> you guys were a handful, all right. <laughs> but hey, we made it out alive. That's it for Honkai Star Rail version 1.2 special program, folks. Thanks again to all you trailblazers for tuning in. And see you for the next one. Bye, so guys. Bye. 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 The Interastropius Corporation has just declared the latest galactic bounty hunt, calling for the capture of the Stellaron Hunters. According to reliable sources, Kafka and Blade are expected to appear at the upcoming Cosmic Refreshment Supplies event, which poses a high risk of destruction. We urge the public to remain vigilant. We will announce the whereabouts of the outlaws in due time and are asking for your assistance in bringing them to justice.